This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. In the early evening of June 10, 1991, in Walla Walla, Washington, Dana Treganowen was getting ready to give her two young daughters their nightly bath. If they were cranky, that was something good to do with them, because they liked their bath and liked to play. In fact, it was always a struggle to get them out of the tub. I always put Caroline in a bathtub ring. I'd used it from the time she was sitting up, from about six months on. I just used it as a safety precaution. Yeah. I usually didn't leave them in the bathroom unattended. And I think it crossed my mind it was probably something I shouldn't do. But then, you know, you think, I'll make a quick phone call, nothing will happen. No, I won't be able to walk tonight. Our conversation lasted no. about three minutes, I think. I could hear Laura playing and splashing and laughing, but I had a strong feeling that just like something inside of me said, check on your kids. Oh, oh God. 911, where's your emergency? Oh, God. Where's your emergency? Yeah, 914 Street. 914 what? Street. Street. Oh. What's the problem? Oh, my little girl fell the tub. She's, she's blue. When I checked for her pulse on her neck, I couldn't find a heart rate. I thought I had let her drown. Your little girl found the tub and she's blue? Yes. Okay, ma'am. Let me you know how to do CPR. You know how to do CPR? Yes. How old is she? How old is she? Ten months. Ten months. Operator in training Ruth Dixon transferred the call to dispatcher Stephanie Wyatt. I was scared to death. I wasn't prepared mentally at all. I needed to take control of myself because I felt myself starting to react as a mother and not as a dispatcher. Get her by the phone right now. I've got her by the phone. Okay, I need you to breathe into her. Two breaths. Walla Walla County Sheriff Sergeant Jim Romai was at the dispatch center when the call came in. When she said, your baby's blue, uh, immediately thought of a, of a dead baby. And there's one thing on my mind, and that was to get there. I don't know if it would make a difference or not, but I was going to try. Okay, lay her flat on the floor. Okay, she's starting to vomit. She's starting to vomit. Turn her on the side, get the stuff out of her mouth. Okay, I've got her on her side. Okay, get all the stuff out of her mouth. Oh, God, this is really terrible. I was hysterical. It was like everything I knew as a nurse kind of went out the window, and I was a mom. I thought I had lost my child. Okay. Get out of her mouth. Lay her flat. I got her flat. Okay. Did you get two breaths in there? I need you to use your fingertips and put them right between her nipples. I've got them. Okay. I need you to press down a half an inch to an inch five times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. The emotional part is really tough for us to take, even though it's just our job. It's just really gut-wrenching. Calm down. You're doing fine. Breathe in. Okay, breathe into her mouth. Make sure not to breathe too hard. Okay. Put your fingers in between her nipples again. I'm doing it. One half to an inch. One, two, three, four, five. I know how to do this. Breathe. Okay, breathe into her mouth. Juniper Lane. Yes. I'm thinking to be here soon. Yes, just keep going. One, two, three, 
probably Four. easiest is Five. Grant. Okay, breathe. Out of her mouth. Okay, put her on her side. I've got it all out. Uh, we're going to talk about you for repeat, baby. Uh, uh, okay, I'm starting again. Okay, keep going. Oh, Five is driving. Nine, four, ten. One, nine, six, arriving. County Fire District volunteer EMT Holly Jones and her husband were on the scene within three minutes. This was my first call as an EMT, and this was extremely scary for me because, you know, maybe I'm not ready for this. Okay, do they have her? Yep. Okay, good job. Okay, bye-bye. I hoped and prayed that that baby would live. But I had no way of knowing. A city fire department unit also arrived, led by senior paramedic Chuck Holman. My first reaction was, this kid is going to die. Okay. She was barely breathing. Get this cleaned out here. So, absolutely no time to waste. I can't, I can't bail her, right? Give me, some, okay. give me some oxygen. I felt terribly guilty. You know, she has put her life into my hands. She's just a little innocent person. And I felt like I'd really failed her. She's starting to throw up. Got a jag here. We suctioned the airway thoroughly, real aggressively, and that was the turning point. The more we suctioned, the more whatever it was that was occluding her airway, and we were able to suction out. And that's when Carolyn started to cry. I heard the baby start crying. It sounded like gold. <laughs> that was the greatest sound I could ever describe at that time. Got the phone and dialed dispatch's number, and I says, Listen to this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hear that? Yes. You did a good job. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Carolyn, you can come back up. Okay. Okay. I wasn't expecting that at all. We don't normally get that happening. I could have hugged him for doing that. <laughs> and then I bawled my eyes out. 11-month-old <laughs> Caroline was not fully conscious when she arrived at St. Mary Medical Center. Richard Jacobs was one of the doctors involved in her care. Typically, if the brain is deprived of oxygen for somewhere between four and six minutes, there's going to be significant damage to that child. Dana and her husband, Doug, kept a vigil at their daughter's bedside. It was just it was real hard because I just looked at her and she's just, you know, 11 months old and super helpless. You know, it was a painful waiting game. I've been wanting her to, you know, sit up and say, hey, you know, let's go play. You know, let's, you know we got to go. It's like, you know, like running in mud. You weren't getting anywhere. And uh, that was real hard. Doug sat next to her bed and talked to her for hours. He never quit talking to her the whole time. And it seemed like every hour she just became more responsive. And by the morning, sometimes she had s was sitting up in bed and saying, Dada and Mama, and smiling. And it just it almost seemed like a miracle. Caroline was released after two days and was fully recovered. Every year, more than 2,000 young children die from drowning incidents. Parents need to be aware that drowning can occur in as little as one inch of water. And the bathtub is the most likely place that a child will die or suffer near drowning. So there's no question that Caroline Dragon Allen was very lucky. <laughs> Knowing that she had a ring around her somehow made me feel she was okay. But you just don't leave your kids in the bathtub, bottom line, ever, by themselves. They go back here. Yeah. I give the 911 dispatcher a huge role. I think she made the difference between Caroline's life. I can still remember her voice. It was very reassuring. She's like an angel. 